Hello, my friends, and welcome to another year. Man, the pages of the calendar have turned and God Almighty has brought you and I and trusted us with a brand new future this year. Hello, everybody, I'm Troy Brewer, and I'm the senior pastor of Open Door Church in Burleson, Texas. You can find me at opendoorexperience.com or at troybrewer.com. And every single year at this time, I go into fasting and prayer and I seek the Lord for prophetic phrases and for prophetic directive for the year to come. I've heard God speak and guys, this is a great year. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna start off with my declaration for the brand new year. I declare in Jesus name that I am so anointed to succeed and grow in abundance this year. I have God's power for this very hour. I will live the dream in 2018. My faith is going to an unseen level. My life is advancing into brand new upgrades. My year is filled with marvelous works and wondrous signs. My words have weight and they are heavy with the oil of heaven. His praise keeps me in a supernatural place. I am consecrated to this purpose. My vision is clear. My assignment is glorious. My heart is expecting. My outcome is destiny. I will see this and much more come to pass in Jesus name. Amen. All right, my friends, I'm going to jump right off into this. And uh, all of this, of course, I'm unpacking at the New Beginnings Conference that I do every year. And then we actually have this on TroyBrewer.tv. But I'm gonna give you the bullet pointed part of this. And I'm not gonna do a whole lot of unpacking, but I'm gonna try and do the very best that I can and get through this. I wanna just say guys that this year is a huge year for prophecy. It is a huge year for prophetic ministry. It is a huge year for prophetic culture. And there's gonna be tremendous advances this year in the year 2018 in the Hebrew year 5778 concerning prophecy, prophetic ministry, and prophetic culture. And guys, there are all different kinds of prophetic ministry. And I like what Michael Fickus has to say when he talks about prophetic emphasis. He talks about three different realms that we all need to be looking for. And one is looking for the Father's heart, boom. Hey, if we see Jesus do it, then we need to be all about it. That was the way that Jesus was. Number two, guys, all of our prophetic ministry should be about helping to bring healing to the body of Christ by bringing encouragement comfort, edification, and correction whenever it's needed. And then thirdly, it's all about the throne of glory from which every high level prophet of this nature receives clear words to trumpet to the body of Christ in each season. My friends, it's a brand new season. It's a brand new future. And I have a very now, right now word that I am responsible for bringing. So buckle your seatbelt, receive this word, and let God Almighty impart something brand new into your life. Okay, man, here we go. I'm gonna start off here by saying this. Number one, we're looking at the Hebrew calendar and, there, and we're also looking at the Gregorian calendar. And one of the things that I can tell you is in my tale of two calendars this year, that the closer we get to the time of the Gentiles being fulfilled, the closer that we get to that, the more that we see the Gentile calendar the, which, which is like this, and this is the Hebrew calendar, we actually see those two overlapping. And what is absolutely amazing is that the Hebrew calendar and the Gentile calendar are actually saying the same thing. And that's, that's crazy cool. So you know what, man, there is a huge witness this year in both calendars. Now, guys, whenever I look at, I'm gonna put it up here on the screen. This is what the two years look like. 5778 in the year 2018. And I'm telling you guys that the two calendars converge on a lot of things, but they're actually, it's very easy to see that they're converging on the number eight. This is key this year. Now, prophetic people who understand that one represents unity and two represents a faithful witness and three represents, you know, perfect completion, four represents creation, five represents grace, six represents a move within mankind or flesh, seven represents perfection of the spirit or the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. But guys, eight, man, eight represents new beginnings. So it's on both calendars. And so this is a year of a double anointing for new beginnings. All right, so because the number eight represents new beginnings, the Holy Spirit had the writers of the Bible pin down eight new things that the Lord gives us. A new song, that's Psalms 96. A new name, that's Isaiah 62. A new heart, that's Ezekiel chapter 18. A new spirit, guys, that's Ezekiel chapter 11. A new tongue, that's Mark chapter 16. And a new commandment, that's John chapter 13. Guys, I don't wanna leave out Revelation chapter 21, which says a new heaven, and a new earth. 
Now guys, other examples of eight within scripture include eight people in the ark whenever it rested upon Arafat. Okay, there it is. Circumcision was to be formed upon the eighth day. So that makes eight the number of new covenant. King David, man, I love me some King David. He was the eighth son of Jesse. Aaron and his sons began their ministry on the eighth day. The word born appears eight times in Jesus's conversation with Nicodemus. The word water appears eight times in Jesus's conversation with the woman at the well. Elijah performed eight miracles. Elisha performed 16 miracles. You know what guys, <clears throat> I could do this all day. There are so many great examples of eight all the way through the word of God. And guys, but I do wanna throw this out there. Do you know that there are eight women prophets that are named in the Bible? Eight women prophets, Deborah, that's Judges chapter four, Huldah, that's second Kings chapter 22, Anna, which is Luke chapter two, verse 36, and the four virgin daughters of Philip, that's Acts chapter two. What are you saying? I'm saying that this is a year of women's prophetic ministry being highlighted. I wanna say that again. This is a year, since there are eight women prophets in the Bible, this is a year of, whim, of women's prophetic ministry being highlighted. Ladies, be looking for the Lord to use you in a heightened prophetic way this year. Man, I like that. Okay, so there's some other things too I'd like to say about that, but I'm gonna wait until the conference and encourage you guys to check out the conference. Okay, I'm gonna jump right off down here. Guys, and whenever we see that the, let's go ahead and let's look at the Hebrew calendar. So, so my Hebrew brothers and sisters are saying that it is the year 5,778. While we are saying that the Gentiles are saying that it is the year 2016, we're basically saying that it is the year 6,016. They are saying that it is the year 5,778. And you will notice that there's a 240 year difference within that. You know what? You don't need to be concerned about that this year. This is not a time to be concerned about that because my friend, soon and very soon, the time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled and it will go back to a 360 day Hebrew calendar, the way it was as, as it is recorded in the book of Genesis and the way that it is also recorded in the book of Revelation, where it says that the tribulation is uh, 1,260 days, and then there's a break, and then it's 1,260 days. And that's three and a half years and three and a half years. That means that we are going to go back to a 360 day a year calendar, which is the original Hebrew lunar calendar, but that doesn't happen until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. The time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled at the rapture of the church. Nonetheless, these two calendars are converging in an amazing way. So let's look at this. Okay, let's put it on the screen. Here it is, boom, five, seven, seven, eight. Well, that's pretty cool. Now guys, I want you to look at this number because right in the center of this is the number 77. Now look, you can see the number five, you can see the number eight, and right in the center of this is 77. Well guys, that's a, that's a, that's a prophetic declaration of what God is speaking concerning this year. 77, my friend, is a biblical number of the church. There are 77 generations from Adam to Christ according to Luke chapter three. The word church is found in the Bible 77 times. The term house of God is found in the Bible 77 times. The word garden is found in the Bible 77 times. The actual verb to forgive is found in the Bible 77 times. The word refuge is found in the Bible 77 times. All those terms are terms that have to do with the church. Okay, you say, well, what's that? But guys, anyway, you know, when, whenever I look up at the heavens, and guys, you guys know that I love the heavens. The celestial wonder, Halley's Comet, comes back into view of the earth every 77 years and is a sign in the heavens that represents a word for the church. Now there's actually, I just found out today, there's gonna to be a comet that happens in December of this coming year that's gonna be out of Taurus the bull that we'll be able to see, which is a sign again that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Taurus the bull represents the sign that says he's unstoppable. He's coming back and every eye shall see him. That's why the main star within that constellation represents the eye, which is called Aldebaran. It's a star called Aldebaran and it's the eye of Taurus the bull. Guys, Jesus is coming back. The momentum is here. Okay, by the way, just wanna throw this out there. This is my high school football pitcher. Boom, <laughs> that's it. I'm the number 77. I was born to build, I was born to be a church builder. And by the way, that's what an Afro is supposed to look like. All right, so the beginning of the centerpiece of this number is the number, 70, is the number 77, but it's got a five on one side and it's got an eight on the other. Five is grace. 
And just in case you don't know what grace is, grace is not what you say before supper. That always, no, no, that's not what it is. Grace is God-given ability to overcome something. And what, what is it that, that God has given us power to accomplish? What is that? It's the, it's the number eight. I've already gone over that. So what are you talking about? God-given ability for new beginnings, considering the church. The church is sandwiched between the power of God and new beginnings. And my friend, that is a green light for you to move forward in all things in the year 2018 or the year 5778, depending upon which calendar it is that you're going by. So this is a year of high level prophetic insight. This is the year of living the dream. And let me tell you why I'm saying that. Guys, the year of dreaming, whenever I declare, and this is a huge prophetic declaration for this year, whenever I declare that this is the year of dreaming, it's because, man, the Hebrew word to dream has the numerical value of 78. So uh, we had Rabbi Jason was here a few months ago and he actually told me that and it totally blew my mind. And guys, the year 78 also means a time to dream. So my friends, this is the year of living the dream. That's right, this is a year of dreaming. By the way, I, I, I wanna just say this to you. If, if you're all full of anxiety, you cannot dream. If you have a survivor's mentality, you're never, ever, ever going to be a dreamer. Surviving is kryptonite to dreaming, amen. Plug into my teachings and hear me teach on that throughout the month of January here at Open Door Church. Okay, so it's the year of dreaming, the numerical value, the Hebrew word to dream is 78, and it's the year 5,778. That means that this is a year of high level prophetic insight. This is the year of living the dream. That means doing the kingdom stuff. That's what that means. This is a year of fighting for the dream. That means that, <clears throat> Pay attention to the headlines this year because one of the things that you're gonna see is political battles and fronts being around the dreamers, okay? The dreamers is a political term uh, for people who, who want to stay in our nation that we're not sure should be actually belong to our nation. Okay, can I tell you, man, there's a big, huge battle going on with dreamers this year. All the spiritual warfare that's taking place is in fact uh, of, is in fact actually involving dreamers. Watch that. Okay, this is the year of the dream team. What does that mean? Okay, well, this is the year of the dream team. Year it means it's a year of strategic alliances, partnerships, and next level collaborations. Boom. The people that you're connected with is more important this year than any other year of your life before now. There has never been a time that you need to be in the right group of people as right now. And I would encourage you, man, if you have not yet found your tribe, find your tribe, amen. Be connected in the body of Christ in an amazing way. This is a year of developing next, next level relationships. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm, I'm having ongoing key prophetic ministry meetings with financial people. So I'm putting together prophetic financial teams, uh, prophetic investment teams. And one of the things guys that I'm telling all of my prophetic uh, financial teams is listen, this is the year of the real deal. This is a year that, that God Almighty authenticates things and this is a year of big deals. This is a year of a land grab. God Almighty told me, Troy, this is a year that people will be able, people who have never owned land will actually get land this year. Like, what are you talking about? No, it's the year of a land grab. A land grab is all about next level living. And are you ready for this, my friends? It's not about the wilderness. It's about the promised land. This is about moving into the territory that God Almighty has given to you. Amen. All right. So if you're going to be developing next level relationships, man, there's a guy by the name of Jerry Acuff, and he wrote a book called The Relationship Edge. And I, I don't want to steal his stuff. I want to give the brother credit for it. He gives six different levels of meeting of building relationships. Number one, there are people who don't know you by name, people that people who do know you by name, people who like you, people who are friendly with you, people who respect you, and people who value a relationship with you. Can I tell you, man, your network is so important this year. I want to encourage you, go after next level networks in the year 2018, because the Spirit of the Lord is moving concerning that. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to move into the next place. And I want to tell you that we do, I've been doing a homeless outreach on East Lancaster for 31 years. I started when I was 19 years old, I'm 51 now. 
And um, man, whenever we first started this thing, we were by ourselves. Now we have hundreds, if not thousands of people going out there with us every year, helping us to feed the homeless. And I'm still on the front lines. And one of the reasons why I'm on the front lines is because God speaks to me through homeless people. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's that crazy. We have to know uh, the different voices that God gives us. And I tell all my team and I tell them, I say, guys, watch, watch the crazy things that homeless people walk up and say to me. And I want you to listen how prophetic it is. Well, I had already began my fast. I had already begun seeking the Lord. We had a tremendous outreach. And this brother walks right up to me and he says, hey, you, yeah, yeah, you, you know, and I, I'm just like, yes, sir. And he says this, he says, I'm supposed to tell you it's all about the J. It's all about the J. And that's all God told me to tell you. And then he leaves and my team just started busting out laughing. And he's like, they're like, did you hear that? He's like, God told him to tell him that. Like, yeah. And they were like, man, Troy, what does that mean? I said, I don't have a clue what it means. I don't have a clue, but I'm going to search it out. My friends, God Almighty has given me the, the, the revelation and you need to know this. Um, it's the year of the J for you. <laughs> It really and truly is. It's the year of the J for you. My homeless brother was exactly right. Okay, what does that mean? Number one, dreaming is all about Joseph. Behold the dreamer. I will unpack that extensively at the conference and throughout the month. Number two, it's about Joshua. What is Joshua all about? That's extreme next level believing, it's kingdom conquest, unification within the body of Christ. Boom, it's all about the J and it's all about the Joshua. Jeremiah is all about a spirit of brokenness. Jeremiah is about having a different prophetic spirit, a different prophetic word that a lot of people will, will not recognize. Just like this. You know what? There's going to be a lot of people go, oh, that's a bunch of baloney or whatever. Hey, listen, you can live according to the Game of Thrones if that's what you want to do. You can keep up with the latest whatever in pop culture. You can worry about the Cardassians or you can literally give your heart to Jesus and live according to the Word of God and according to the way that the Spirit of the Lord is moving there in this time. And I'm telling you that when it comes to Jeremiah, this is a year of the Jeremiah. This is the year of being broken before the Lord. And that's a huge theme. Luke chapter 20, verse 18. Did you catch that? Luke 20, 18. It's 2018, that's year. It says this, those that fall upon the rock will, will be broken, but those that the rock falls upon will become crushed. God wants to crush your enemies this year. So make sure that you're falling upon Him. You're relying upon Him. You're totally dependent upon Jesus this year because this is the year of the J and it's the year of the Jeremiah spirit of brokenness, amen. It's also the year of Jesus. And we're like, well, every year is the year of Jesus. Now, the first wave of revival that happens this year is that the church falls in love with Jesus again. You're gonna see this happen all over the body of Christ in every denomination, in every non-denomination, in every organized church, in every non-organized group of believers that people are gonna fall in love with Jesus in a whole new way. And I've, I'll tell you a whole lot more about that later. But guys, this is also the year of Jehu. And Jehu is the political prophet. Jehu, listen, the Spirit of God is moving in business realms, he's moving in work realms, and he's moving in political realms. He's moving in business realms in a huge way this year. But I promise you this, guys, the Spirit of God is moving in political realms in a crazy way this year. It's, it's the year of Jehu. Now, Jehu is all about a political spirit that casts down Jezebel. And guys, we can already see that in the Trump and in the Hillary thing, right? The casting down of Jezebel. I'm telling you that Trump represents Jehu. I don't care if you like Trump, if you don't like Trump, you have to be able to see prophetic pictures whenever God Almighty gives one. And I'm telling you right now that President Donald J. Trump represents a Jehu kind of an anointing that comes in, charges in furiously and casts down Jezebel. And there's an entire shift that, that begins to take place. Well, during my fast and while I was seeking the Lord concerning this, I'm going to bring a next level part of this word right now. God gave me a huge next level word and I'm going to tell you this. God Almighty has told me to say this. Iran and North Korea are targeted as the illegitimate demonic children of China and Russia. And they are in big, big trouble this year. God is tired of how they have enslaved his people. God is, God, God is tired of hearing the cries of his persecuted church. And I declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that the sword of the Lord is risen against them. Okay, when I begin to type that out, I could not type that out quick enough. And here's what I wanna tell you. 
God told me, Troy, go and look at the headlines in the month of December because there's a prophetic symbol of what is about to happen to the, to the strategic demonic alliance between Iran and North Korea. Now guys, this is a year of next level strategic alliances. I've already told you that. There's a tremendous prophetic strategic alliance between America and Israel this year. All right, well, just exactly like that, there is a demonic um, uh, a demonic strategic alliance that has not been resisted in the United States for years and years and years. In fact, in fact, we pandered to it. We've actually given them billions of dollars. It's absolutely ridiculous. But as soon as I begin to look into this, I said, okay, God, I'm going to look. And I looked into the news and the big news in the month of December was that there was actually a defector that came from North Korea. Now, what everybody was saying about this defector from, from North Korea was this. They were saying, oh my goodness, he represents, listen, we can look at him and we can ask him and he can tell us everything about North Korea. And that was the huge, big assignment. You know, he's gonna tell us about their infrastructure. He's gonna tell us about the weapons that they have on the border. He's gonna tell us about mi military readiness. And so whenever we see what it is that he tells us, it tells us about prophetically what is, a, what is actually happening to North, to North Korea in, a, in, in, in fact, a right now word. Boom. On the front page of CNN, on if you go to Tuesday, December the 5th in the year 2017, this is what it says. North Korea soldier, surgeon says defector was like a broken jar. Man, when I read that, I nearly fell out of my chair because my friends, a bro broken jar is the sound that Gideon made with his 300 men. And I'm going to tell you that a broken jar is the sound of the enemies of God becoming defeated. God Almighty says, amen, that a sound has gone out, that a sound has gone out, that the small number is able to defeat the great number, both in Iran and also to in, in North Korea. Furthermore, there's, a, there's a, a scripture in Acts chapter 12 that I'm gonna read you because it tells us how Herod ends. And God told me that Iran and also North Korea is gonna end the same way that Herod ended. I heard him speak that. So I went and I looked it up and this is what it says. So on a set day, Herod, arrayed in, Herod was arrayed in royal apparel and he sat up on his throne and he, gave an or, and he gave an oration to them and the people kept shouting, it's the voice of God and not a man, the voice of God and not a man. That's exactly what they say about the Ayatollah over in, over in Iran. That's exactly what they say about the rocket man over in North Korea. They say the, they say the same things. And then in verse 23, 23 represents death, by the way. Then immediately, you ought to just get that key phrase, immediately. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and he died. Now, friends... I want to tell you that the big news about this defector that tells us what is happening in North Korea is that he was full of worms. Yeah, look it up. This poor, this poor man, and by, by the way, guys, his name was O, and O, it's literally capital O-H. That's the brother's name. And that is the shout, right on. His name represents a shout. Oh my gosh, well, that's what you do when you throw down the broken jars, is you shout, and then the small number defeats the great big number. Hallelujah. guys. This is what all of the newspapers and all the headlines had to say. Quote, North Korean news, defector riddled with 10 inch worms. North Korean defector recovering in Seoul, full of parasitic worms. Surgery reveals North Korean defector is riddled with parasitic worms. He's 24 years old and he has 24 pounds of 10 inch worms removed from his body. Okay, that's the way that Herod died. And this is the word that God Almighty gave me, and it's this. The leaders of both nations will end as Herod ended, and they will die from the inside out. That's a big prophetic word for this, for this next season, is that you will see in broad daylight, while they are fully arrayed in all of their splendor and sitting on their throne, they will die from the inside out. I don't think that, uh, uh, Iran and Korea is going to fall because we attack them or whatever. We may very well attack them. We may very well defend ourselves against them and attack them. But know this, their fall is going to come from the inside out. That's a right now word that God Almighty has given us. All right, I'm going to continue on. The number 70 
78, the number 78 is where the year is, right? It's the year 78. The number 78 in the Strong's Exhausting Concordance is very interesting because it's a judge that lived in Bethlehem during the time of Judges and his name is Ibzan, I-B-Z-A-N, and his name means the Splendid Witness. And he's born in Bethlehem, and that speaks of House of Bread and Miraculous Birth. Both of those are huge prophetic headlines for 2018. House of Bread, Miraculous Birth, remember that. Those are, those are huge key principles for the year 2018. And in Judges chapter 12, this is what it says in verse 8. And after Jephthah, Ibzan of Bethlehem, he judged Israel. He had 30 sons, and he had 30 daughters, and he gave them away in marriage. And then Ibsen died and was buried at Bethlehem. What a stark contrast from Ibsen to his predecessor, Jephthah. Jephthah, Jephthah died in office and he had one daughter and his daughter died in, ops, in, in, in office. The guy, who, the guy who followed him had exactly 30 sons and exactly 30 daughters. He had this 30-30 blessing. And that speaks of something incredible. That speaks of balance right on. It speaks of perfect fulfillment. And then guys, the Bible says this, that he saw them all married. Guys, can I just tell you, this is the year of the Ibzan anointing. So this is, this is a 78 is stamped where, where, where things have been barren. Now there is abundance. That's what Ibzan is all about. And the number 78 is stamped all over that. So this is the year of the Ibzan anointing where there has been a failure and great, and great disappointment before. Now there will be a shift in those very areas and there will be abundance and redemption and balance and things made right. Wow, man, grab a hold of that word. Guys, one of the, one of the things that God told me on the, on the first time that I began to seek him and fast him around Yom Kippur of, of this last year was this, in 2018, the place that you hate becomes the place that you love. Where you've been sadly disappointed, where you've seen extreme failure, where things haven't worked, where you've been barren, King Jesus is going to show up in those places this year. So start going after that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, now all of that is due to the Ibzan anointing and that's being released. And by the way, guys, Ibzan, the name Ibzan actually, actually means splendid witness. It means splendid witness. Man, I like that. So splendid witness in fruit bearing, splendid witness in heritage and in legacy. It's the year of living big in supernatural family and community, my friends. Guys, 5778 is the year of God bearing witness through prophetic dreams, marvelous works, and supernatural signs. I'm telling you, God Almighty is going to authenticate and confirm things this year through signs and through miracles and through wonders. And guys, I'm just gonna tell you there's a big difference, a great big difference between people who, are, who refuse to be a part of the miraculous and people who will be a part of the miraculous. Are you ready for this? That's Exodus 2018. The Exodus 2018, it's another 2018 scripture that says, when the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the smoke and they saw the crazy things, the supernatural things that God was doing, that they stood afar off. My friend, that is not gonna be you. That's not gonna be me this year. The last thing that I wanna share with you guys, and I have so much more for this, have so much more, but the last thing that I want to share with you is this. The number 78 is the same value for the Hebrew word bread. That's right. This is the year of bread, and that is a prophetic word over the season that we're actually working in right now. So what is bread? Okay, bread is fullness. Bread is abundance. Bread is the bread of life. Bread is Bethlehem, house of bread, which is miraculous birth. There's that term again. Guys, can I tell you that this is a huge year for miraculous birth in places where you have been barren. By the way, guys, I wanna show you guys a picture right now of the 18th letter of the alphabet. Boom, do you see it? It looks like a dude on his knees with his hands raised up. Okay, I want you to also look, and you'll look up here in the corner, the numerical value of the 18th letter is 90. Okay. Let me tell you why 90 is important. Because 90 is the year, is, is how old Sarah was when she miraculously gave birth. There it is again. Again, man, the 2018 calendar, which is the Gregorian calendar, and also to the 5778 calendar, which is a Hebrew calendar, they converge this year and they say the same exact things. Listen, look for miraculous birth this year. Where you have seen barrenness, God Almighty is gonna do something amazing. The last, there's a whole bunch of things about bread that I could tell you. One of the things is, is that bread is associated with miracles of multiplication, right? The breaking of bread, feeding the 5,000, dude. Also too, bread is also hidden manna. 
And in the book of Revelation chapter two, he says this, I will give the head to, to those who overcome, I will give the hidden manna from heaven, particularly if you overcome the doctrine of Balaam and the Nicolaitans. Do, listen, do your due diligence and look up what the doctrine of Balaam prophetically, prophetically, I should say, um, represents and also to the uh, Nicolaitans and say, you know what, I'm overcoming all that religious and all of that new age mess that's happening this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Guys, bread is the manifest presence of God. This is the year of the manifest presence of God. The table of showbread. Showbread means manifest presence. Bread is the body of Christ. It's a big year for the church, five, seven, seven, eight. Bread is the healing. What, what, what are you talking about, healing? Okay, Matthew chapter 15, Jesus Christ says, he calls, he calls the children's bread healing. He said, you know what? It's not meat that I, should, that I should throw the children's bread to dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. But you know what? Even dogs get to get the crumbs. And you know what? From that very hour, her daughter was healed. Healing is the children's bread. Can I tell you guys, this is a tremendous year of healing. Your healing is coming this year. I'm gonna close by saying this. Numbers chapter 14 identifies bread as overcoming the enemy. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Okay, God's gonna teach you how to eat up giants this year. God's gonna teach you how to take on and say, you know what, you see that monster opposition? That's bread to me. Yeah, that's bread to me. Man, you need to learn that prophetic language. Here's another way that bread represents overcoming the, overcoming the, the, the overcoming the enemies of God. Guys, you remember I told you that it's all about the sound of a broken jar and a shout. That's huge for North Korea this year, which is Gideon, a small group of people overcoming a massive army. Okay, there are 60,000 Christians in the torture chambers of North Korea right now, and God Almighty is hearing their cry. I'm telling you, he is. But here's another Gideon. In a prophetic dream, <laughs> Gideon was seen as a loaf of bread rolling over the enemies. Guys, can I just tell you, it's the year of bread. It's the year of you devouring your enemy, and it is the year of you plowing over your enemies. And I wanna, I wanna leave you with this scripture. Luke chapter 20, verse 18, two different groups. Whoever falls upon the rock will be broken, but whoever it falls upon will be grinded to powder. So which part are you gonna be a part of this year? That's, that's literally not even half of my prophetic word. I've just got so much more to unpack and I'm going to at the rest of the conference. But I wanna pray for you before I, before I talk to you about how you can get the rest of all this and all this, I, I wanna pray for you right now. I want you to be ready to receive this. In fact, why don't you repeat after me? Are you ready? Are you ready to do this? Here we go. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that I will walk in all the things that you have for me in the year 2018 and 5778. This is my year. I want to be in alignment with you. I give you my right now, all of my past and all of my future so that I can live the dream in 2018. In Jesus name, amen. Boom. Well, you know what, man, if you just prayed that prayer with me and if you're standing with me in that, hey, would you consider going to troybrewer.com and typing me up and going, hey, dude, I just saw your video and I'm standing with you and I believe in God in the name of Jesus. While you're there, while you're there, you can actually find information on how to join troybrewer.tv where you can get the conference where I'm unpacking all of this over, over three days and all of my continued prophetic conferences throughout the year, including on spiritual warfare, including on signs in the heavens, including on numbers that preach. And you know what? You can also find a bunch of valuable resources um, there at troybrewer.com. So go there and check that out. As always, you can find me on my Facebook and I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna put up my Facebook right now and be sure and join me on YouTube. Hey man, be a subscriber at YouTube where this, where this video is at right now and many more coming throughout the year. This is, a great, this is a great, great, great year for you, my friends. I call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath and highly favor of the Lord. God bless you, my friends. <music>